Welcome to Dental Tutorials and in this video we're going to discuss the structure of dental materials. This is the first lecture in the series. We're going to be discussing various dental materials. We'll go on to discussing tooth morphology, um, dentures, wax up techniques and also pediatric dentistry. So let's begin our first lecture on the structure of dental materials. The aims of this lecture are are to go over various types of bonding within dental materials, crystalline and amorphous materials, physical properties, imbibition and solubility, and wettability and adhesion. Chemical bonds. Cohesive forces. These are forces holding atoms together. Chemical bonds consist of cohesive forces. The interatomic bonds can be classified into primary and secondary bonds, and the strength of bonds and its ability to restructure conclude the physical properties of materials. Primary bonds. They can be ionic, covalent and metallic. Ionic bonds. For example, sodium chloride. Ionic bonds are characterized by electron transfer from one element, positive, to another, negative. It's a product of mutual, mutual attraction of positive and negative charges. Because sodium atom has one valence electron in its outer shell, and the chlorine atom has seven electrons in its outer shell, the transfer of sodium valence electrons to the chlorine atom results in the stable compound NaCl. In dentistry, gypsum and some phosphate-based cements possess ionic bonds in their crystalline phases. Covalent bonds. For example, the hydrogen molecule. The bond is characterized by electron sharing and very precise bond operation. The single valence electron in each hydrogen atom is shared with that of the other combining atom and the valence shell becomes stable. In dentistry, covalent bonding occurs in many organic compounds such as dental resins in which, hydro in which compounds link to form backbone structures of hydrocarbon chains. Metallic bonds. These are characterized by electron sharing and the formation of a gas or cloud of electrons that bonds the atoms together in a lattice. The atoms become positively charged because of the electron gas formation. So, because of the ability to donate and recover electrons, atoms in a metal crystal exist as clusters of positive metal ions enclosed by a cloud of electrons. This structure is classic for metals and it's, a bit, and it's responsible for their elect excellent electrical and thermal conductivity and also for their ability to distort plastically. Secondary bonds, for example, hydrogen bonds and van der Waal forces. Secondary bonds do not share electrons like in primary bonds. The charge differences amongst molecules or atomic groups induce polar forces which attract the molecules. Hydrogen bonds, for example, water molecule. Attached to the oxygen atom are two hydrogen atoms by covalent bonds. The protons of the H atom pointing away from the oxygen atom are not shielded efficiently by the electrons and the proton side of the water molecule is positively charged. The opposite side, on the opposite side of the molecule, the electrons that fill the outer orbit of the oxygen atom provide a negative charge, thus a permanent dipole exists that represents an asymmetrical molecule. When a water molecule intermingles with other water molecules, the hydrogen which is the proton portion of one molecule, is attracted to the oxygen or the negative portion of its neighboring molecules and then hydrogen bridges are formed. In dentistry, the polarity of this nature is important for the intermolecular reactions in many organic compounds such as the absorption of water by synthetic dental resins. Van der Waal forces. Van der Waal forces form the basics of dipole attraction. In a symmetric molecule such as an inert gas mainly with a covalent bond. The electron field constantly fluctuates. Its charge becomes momentarily, momentarily positive and negative, thus creating a dipole which, acts, which attracts other similar dipoles. These such interatomic forces are very weak. The structure of dental materials. So when you are considering the structure of dental materials, you must first look at the chemical elements. In this basis, it's metals, metalloids, and non-metals. There are three aggregate states, solid, liquid, and gaseous. 
All metals, excluding mercury, exist in solid state in room temperature. The materials used in dentistry are mainly in solid state. Atoms are bonded to each other by primary or secondary forces. In solid state, they are combined in a manner that ensures minimal entire energy. The solid materials can possess amorphous or non-crystalline structures or crystalline structures. Amorphous materials, they can be inorganic and organic materials. The molecules are distributed at random so there is no ordered arrangement. They also can be isotropic materials whereby they possess the same properties in all directions. They have low heat and electric conductivity. In dentistry, amorphous materials are porcelain, polymers and composites. Crystalline materials. In solid state, the atoms do not simply form only pairs. For example, in NaCl, all positive ion, uh, sodium ions attract all negative chlorine ions. Because of this, a space lattice forms, which is a regularly spaced configuration. A space lattice is defined as an arrangement of atoms in, a, in space in which every atom is situated similarly to every other atom. Space lattice exists in all metal in all metals and alloys and in also some inorganic and high molecular organic materials anisotropic materials they possess different properties in different directions there is no clear boundary between crystalline and amorphous materials wax has a crystalline structure but below 37 degrees but above 50 degrees it's amorphous polymorphism and allotropy these are whereby the property of some materials to change their crystalline structure and changing the temperature which results in changing of their properties. The defects in crystal lattices. Crystal defects are of great importance for diffusion processes. They depend on the heat treatment of the material. There are four types of defects. For example, vacancies. These are free spaces along the, mole the molecular structure. Dislocation of an atom. Impurity or allo alloy atom, which has been replaced or inserted. And dislocations, which are formed by many vacancies in one line. The physical properties of dental materials. For example, the density. It's a mass of substance per unit volume. The equation is written below. Relative dens density is the ratio between materials density and the density of a standard substance. Indefinite physical conditions. Thermal properties of the materials. Thermal conductivity is the thermal physical measure of how well heat is transferred through a material by conductive flow. Conduction of heat through metals occurs through interactions of crystal lattice vibrations and by motions of electrons and their interactions with atoms. K is the coefficient of thermal conductivity. The quantity of heat in calories per second that passes through a specimen 1 cm thick having a cross-sectional area of 1 cm squared when the temperature difference between the surfaces perpendicular to the heat flow of the specimen is 1K. Conductors are materials with high thermal conductivity, usually crystal materials. Insulators are materials of low thermal conductivity, amorphous materials, for example porcelain, polymers, glass and wax. In dentistry, heat is transferred more rapidly away from the tooth when cold water contacts the metallic restoration compared to the resin-based composite. The increased conductivity of the metal induces greater pulp sensitivity, which is expressed as a negligible, mild, moderate or extreme discomfort depending on previous tooth trauma and the pain response of the patient. In dentistry, the low thermal conductivity of enamel and dentin aids in reducing thermal shock and pupil, pupil pain when hot and cold foods are taken into the mouth. However, the presence of oral restorations of any type tends to change the environment. In many instances, especially in metal restorations, it is necessary to insert a thermal insulator between the restoration and the tooth structure. In this respect, 
a restorative material that exhibits a low thermal conductivity is more desirable. On the other hand, artificial teeth are held in a denture base that ordinarily is, is constructed on a th synthetic resin insulator. Thus, the patient partially loses the sensation of hot and cold whilst eating and drinking. The use of metal denture bases may be more comfortable and pleasant from this standpoint. The coefficient of thermal expansion. The linear dimensions and the volume of the bodies change with the changing of the temperature due to the increased fluctuation amplitudes of the atoms and molecules in heatings. Alpha coefficient of thermal expansion. The change in length per unit of the original length of a material when its temperature is raised by 1K. There is a specific parameter for each substance. In dentistry, a tooth restoration may expand or contract more than the tooth during a change of a temperature. Thus, there may be a marginal micro leakage adjacent to the restoration, or the restoration may debond from the tooth. Thermal stresses produced from a thermal expansion or contraction deference are also important in the production of metal ceramic restorations. Consider a porcelain veneer that is fired to a metal substrate. It may contract to a greater degree than the metal during cooling and it induce tensile stresses in the porcelain that may cause immediate or delayed crack formation. For reducing or eliminated, eliminating these thermal stresses, the materials have to be selected in such a way their expansion coefficient is matched fairly closely, within 4%. These are the coefficient of thermal expansions of some dental materials, in temperatures of 20 to 50 degrees. Melting and sublimation. Melting temperature. Equilibrium temperature, at which heating of a pure metal, compound or eutectic alloy, produces a change from solid to liquid, it is different for different metals. Pure metals are melted in constant temperature. Alloys are melted in temperature intervals, which is lower than the melting temperature of their components. The specific heat exerts significant impact on the melting rate. The metals with lower heat capacity melt faster and in lower temperatures. Sublimation. In heating, sub -sub in heating some substances change from solid to gas phase. In dentistry, in melting of mel metal alloys, the easily meltable component can evaporate, thus changing the alloy's composition and the properties as a consequence. Electrical conductivity. The ability of metals to conduct electric current due to the presence of electron gas. Crystalline materials, metals, are good electric conductors. The amorphous polymers, porcelain, cements and composites are electric insulators. In dentistry, use of metals with different electrode potential and different electric conductivity in the oral environment provokes the galvanic current leading to galvanic corrosion and destroying of the construction. Therefore, the metals have to be insulated with porcelain and polymers. It is preferable to use insulators for dental purposes. Imbibition and solubility. Imbibition the act of imbibing or absorbing the liquids resulting in dimensional changes, increasing the volume. Polymers, hydrocolloid impression materials and composite cements possess these properties, whereas porcelain and alloys do not possess imbibition. In dentistry, the volume of the polymer base of a denture increases in an oral environment after the absorption of liquids. If it is stored in a dried place, its volume reduces. These multiple actions can lead to internal stresses and fatigue, cracking and destroying of the material. Imbibition is an unfavorable property of dental materials. Solubility is the degradation of the met material in liquids. Wettability and adhesion. Viscosity is the resistance of liquid to flow. Most liquids, when placed in motion, resist imposed forces that cause them to move. This resistance to fluid flow is controlled by internal frictional forces within a liquid. Thus, viscosity is a measure of the consistency of a fluid and its inability to flow. A higher viscous fluid flows slowly. The viscosity of most liquids decreases rapidly with increasing temperature. Viscosity may also depend on previous deformation of the liquid. 
a liquid that becomes less viscous and more fluid under repeated applications of pressure is referred to as thixotropic. In dentistry, in casting of a metal reconstruction, it is necessary to increase the alloy temperature to a certain degree for decreasing its viscosity and increasing the fluidity. Adhesion, a surface attachment process. When two substances are brought into intimate contact with each other, the molecules of one substance adhere or are attracted to the molecules of the other substance. This force is called adhesion. Adhesion, when unlike molecules are attracted. Cohesion, when molecules of the same kind are attracted. Adhesive, the material or film used to cause adhesion. The adherent is the material to which it's applied. Mechanical bonding, it's the penetration of the adhesive into microscopic or submicroscopic irregularities, crevices and pores in the surface of the substrate. On hardening, the numerous adhesive projections embedded in the adherent surface provide the anchorage for mechanical attachment or retention. For example, resin restorative materials do not have the capability of truly adhering to tooth structure. Leakage adjacent to the restoration may occur resulting in secondary caries. To minimize the risk, acid etching technique is used. Before insertion of the resin, the enamel of the adjoining tooth structure is exposed, exposed to phosphoric acid for a short period. The acid produces minute pores in the enamel surface into which resin subsequently flows when it's paste, placed into the preparation. On hardening, these resin projections provide improved mechanical retention of the restoration. Wettability the ability of liquid to flow easily over the entire surface and adhere to the solid. Adhesion depends on wetting. If the liquid does not wet the surfaces of the adherent, adhesion between the liquid and the adherent will be negligible or non-existent. If there is true wetting of the surface, adhesion failures could not occur. The conduct angle, beta, is the angle formed at the interface of the adhesive and the adherent. It characterizes the wetting. Hydrophilic materials, the contact angle of water is zero degrees. With hydrophobic materials, the contact angle of water is greater than 90 degrees. In dentistry, the materials with good wettability are preferable for dental purposes because of their very good spreading on the adherent, resulting in better adhesion. This concludes our lecture on the structure of dental materials. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be uploading various videos relating to dental materials and other aspects in the field of dentistry. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.